Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the restoration of the old number seven NASCAR modified. We've got brakes. Hey folks, I'm Mike. This is KEI Fabrication. Two and a half years ago, we pulled what was left of this vintage open wheel NASCAR modified out of the woods and we've begun the resurrection process. Here we are 45 years later and this car is extremely close to returning to the track. I hope you like this stuff. Follow along, like, share, and subscribe, and go on the journey with us. Got all new brake hardware and wheel cylinder on the right rear. Have to do a little brake adjustment there. just got these back I had the drums turned and I'm going to assemble the brakes for the front of the old modified and uh, repack the wheel bearings I want those to be like hundred percent ready to go uh, and then start plumbing uh, with brake lines all right I got the new races installed and uh, what I did is um, I took the old races and I ground them down so they would act as a driver that was a loose fit in the bore and I drove both the inner and outer ends in so I'm going to repack the bearings these are all washed out with brake clean and um, I got a brand new seal we'll put that in and then we'll be good to go I hope All right, we'll let that sit over here. I'll go put the brake hardware and shoes on the driver's side. I'm sorry, passenger side, brake front. And uh, at least that will be fully assembled and race ready. That'll be a nice feeling.
right, some of you probably are freaking out because I'm using the anti-seize in a lot of places. The reason why I do that is this thing is going to be doing a lot of sitting around and it may actually be caught out in the rain and the, one of the ways that this is going to uh, maybe see some water making its way into here, the brake assembly is uh, when this thing is on an open trailer and I'm on my way home from somewhere, we could certainly get into a situation where the rain is just funneling its way in. So rather than take the risk of uh, this stuff seizing up, that's why I do it. Uh, you know, somebody may have a personal preference of maybe white lithium grease or something to that effect. Um, I've always been a big fan of the uh, anti-seize compound. I uh, don't know why, just something that I've used. And when I take brakes back apart, when I'm doing a brake job over again, usually this stuff is, um, is still there. You know, it's, it doesn't, uh, doesn't wear out. And um, I think the brakes stay uh, loose or whatever, if you want to call it that. They don't seize up and begin to bind or drag uh, because of this reason. These are famous for rusting out. Again, that might not be the case with this car, but uh, if I take it on a trip and it gets caught out in the rain and then I put it away and it just sits, hopefully this will be a little bit of an insurance policy. Well, there's the original adjusters. One of them is in really nice shape. The other one's kind of pitted, but I think it'll work. Let me see if I can get these to come back to life. All right, we're going to have to find something else to do today. Yeah. The brake hardware kit I bought is not even close. This is supposed to be uh, the same length as that one. And I'd rather have the heavy duty issues. And I really don't want to put them back together uh, with the uh, old original springs. Um, I mean, they don't look in terrible shape. They're not in danger of breaking. I just would prefer new if I could find them. And I'm going to look for new brake adjusters as well because um, this one is actually in really nice shape. I wouldn't be afraid to use this again. The other one is really bad. So uh, rather than rush it, I'm going to hold off and try and do it correctly. All right, we're going to do an internet search for some parts. Well, folks, we're back in the shop today. It's 38 degrees in the shop right now and 23 degrees outside and we're back on the brake project as you saw before I ended the previous video the brake springs that I had ordered are not correct and the brake adjusters uh, didn't come in the kit that I had ordered and the original ones were unusable, unsavable. So let's see what we can do about that. All right, so the original problem was my brake return springs were radically different between what came in the kit and what was used on the car originally. So I did the old internet search. Hopefully what we found is the correct stuff. So. This is looking a lot better, although the size of the spring is not as uh, great. Hopefully it'll scratch. And the 
the other dilemma was the adjuster spring. And this looks like it's uh, a more reasonable and more suitable to do the job. So I think I've got the hardware to uh, take this the rest of the way. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to do the job accordingly. So the kit I ordered that ended up not being correct, I ordered for a early 60s Buick. And I'm not sure if it was just the wrong kit or that's not the application that we're trying to match. The spring hardware kit that I ended up going with is a 62 Chevrolet Impala. So again, large vehicle, big, big drum brakes back in the day. So I'm just hoping that between the two different applications, we're, we're back where we need to be. So let's take a look at the brake adjuster here. And we can see that these are nearly identical. So I'm thinking that I'm much closer to what belongs in here than I had previously. I mean, this is in almost every detail is exact. So pretty happy about that. So let's, uh, let's start putting this thing together. That's as good as it's going to get. Step on the brakes. This is the right springs to pull everything away from the drum. We're going to go with that. Alright, I finally got the brake shoes to sit where they belong, and I've got some nice uh, free rotation. The bearing is just snug, and I'm going to go ahead and put the brake adjusted spoon in there and get some drag on it, and uh, just see, see what's happening. All right, I didn't film much, but I managed to get some uh, brake bracketry for the front flexible hose in. The front end is at full droop and turned hard lock left, and uh, I got plenty of plenty of room left. And I managed to get all four drums on, and all the brakes are adjusted, all the seals are in, all the wheel bearings are repacked, and that's on all four corners. So we. Working our way around the car here, I managed to get the um, rear brake line run up to the master cylinder. I used some P-clamps and some rib nuts to fasten it all along the frame. I'll show you some pictures of that. And I also made the, the line come up along this roll bar. And then there's some two P-clamps, one to support the line horizontal, one to support the line vertical. This is a temporary T. When the flexible hose comes in, it'll connect at that fitting, and then it'll bolt on down there. I put some, just some quick aluminum angle iron with a rib nut in it to hold the line going around the front of the differential. And there's one over there in the middle of the axle. There's one over here on the uh, in front of the shock to hold the driver's side rear brake line heading over to the wheel cylinder. So everything's got clearance. There's plenty. There's nothing going to get trapped between the frame and the axle tube. None of the suspension is in the way. So pretty good. Actually, once I get the flexible holes installed, I can actually put fluid in the master cylinder and bleed the rear brakes. I won't do that until the front brakes are done. So I'm waiting on a coil of 3 16 line to plumb the front brakes and that won't be in for another couple of days so we're going to move on to something else.
All right, gang. I've got the uh, front brake line brackets installed. All I did was use a piece of two by three box tubing and I made it two and a quarter inches long to extend out. I drilled a three quarter inch hole in it so one of these U-clips could be utilized to hold it in place. And that two and a quarter inches actually allowed for just about the right amount of room for the, the 90 degree bed, the tightest 90 degree bed that I could make on the brake line. So the brake line plumbing is all roughed in. I'm going to weld these brackets on, spray a little coat of paint on them, and then I'm going to go through and put the P-clips in a couple of locations along, this, this travels along the, uh, the cross member, I'll show you that in a minute. But the engine cross member is right here and the freight line follows the front side of that, so I'll P-clip it along there. Uh, yeah, so let's do some welding. Sorry for the extra noise. It was like 35 degrees in the shop again this morning, so I've got the campfire going to help warm things up in a reasonable fashion. So we managed to get the master cylinder mounted on the firewall and the brake lines for the front and the rear run and I've got, I don't know if I showed you this before, but we've got it plumbed all the way to the wheels on both sides. That's the T that connects one side to the other. Everything, all the P-clamps are installed and the fluid is in the system and the brakes are working. videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. We got lots more to show you. Stay tuned.